calling all Tampa lady gangers or really anyone who wants to fly into Tampa to see us live at the Tampa Improv on June 26 at 3 p.m. We're going to have a grand old time and head over to theladygang.com to get your tickets now. See you there. Everything is better electrified, and Hyundai has the widest range of electrified vehicles on the market, including the first-ever Tucson and Santa Fe plug-in hybrid EVs. Visit your nearest Hyundai dealer or learn more at HyundaiUSA.com. Today's episode of Lady Gang is brought to you by the new Starbucks Baya Energy Drink. With caffeine naturally found in coffee fruit, it's energy that's good. Starbucks Baya Energy Drink is available online at grocery stores, convenience stores, and gas stations nationwide. It's time for a quickie. Podcast One presents The Lady Gang, the Hollywood girl posse with Lady Gang Quickie. Here's Kelty Knight, Becca Tobin, and Jack Vanek. Let's make this quick. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to The Lady Gang Quickie. I am back here with Jack and Kelty. Wow. So wow. recently... We had some comments on our social media that said, I really miss when you used to do What's in the Box. Mm. Remember What's in the Box? Mm. What's, what's in, in the Box? box? Uh-huh. Um, and since I, I know where that box is because just a few weeks ago I was in L.A. and Alex came to work and she had a mental breakdown looking at the Lady Gang closet that I've just been shoving shit in like a hoarder <laughs> for months. And we organized it. And by we, I mean she organized it and found the box. So we could start What's in the Box again. But now we have Instagram questions, so we just collected them from there. Okay. Still What's in the Box. Just Still a digital box. The digital box. Okay. So this first one is for Jack. Jack, what's the best way to move on from a toxic ex-boyfriend? Love you gals. I'm going to also connect that with another question that is how to cope with an ex getting engaged and an ex moving on. How to cope with getting over ad- abusive, did you say? Toxic. Toxic. Um... I mean, I tried all of the things and I tried like keeping to myself and doing the whole spiritual thing and getting to know like me with nobody else around. I tried the dating everybody and hooking up with randoms. I tried, you know, going to therapy and reading self-help. I tried it all. And honestly, like it was all fine. But the only thing that like truly got me over it was time. Like, I feel like time truly does heal all wounds and it's like a slow, slow burn to actually like have it heal you. But, um, you just have to like keep trying to make yourself better and keep trying to do things that are healthy for you. And eventually it'll kind of like come together sometimes maybe. Mm. Becca, what have you struggled with being a new mom? Mm. Besides the obvious, like not having sleep, yeah. Um, mm, well, like every phase is different, and the phases are so short, but they're so specific when they're babies. Um, I was in a really tough phase a couple weeks ago when I was in Atlanta. He was just like not wanting to be put down and he can't crawl yet and he doesn't want to be sitting in a swing or a chair or whatever so it's like you base I was not prepared for having to like actually physically carry a baby around with me for like 24 hours a day no matter what I was doing and only have one hand to do everything Mm. do you do a baby Bjorn yeah but when they're that little they face in and he just wants to face out and be and see the world. So he's not happy unless he's facing out. So you're holding him this like bowling ball, a he- two bowling balls and you're facing him out or to see the world. But meanwhile, your entire life stops because you can't put him down. Can Ugh. you strap them on like Zach Galvanakis in the hangover? Cause didn't he have the baby strapped on facing out? Yeah, yeah, but you're not really supposed to until they're older because they're like neck and back and all this shit is not fully ready for that ergonomically, I guess. So you have to physically just hold them in your arm. Yeah. Do you have an arm that you hold him in? And is that arm going to get a yeah, lot more like muscular muscle than the other one? Soreness? I have to swap out because he's so heavy. And I, I definitely have some major like muscles happening in my arms. 
I mean, silver lining. I guess. <laughs> Maybe work out. Um, okay. How do you not take things personally? This is such a good topic. Hmm. Kelty, you're good at this. I think you yeah. should start. You're okay. the queen of not taking things personally. Um, I have gotten more sensitive in my elder age, but I, I guess like, um, I, I, okay. So I think first of all, yeah, no, I don't take things personally. Cause like my mom is so sensitive and I've been spending time with her up here and like, she takes everything personal. I'm like, mom, it's not about you. Oh my God. Such an annoying habit. Don't be that person that takes things personally. I just feel like everyone's doing their own shit and we are all imperfect and um like jinx monsoon from drag race water off a duck's back like sometimes people just need to say things and they may not mean them or they may mean them but really what people think of me is none of my business do i like myself do the people that i like like me yeah have i upset the people that i care about so like but then at work, I feel like it's easy to take stuff personally at work. Like when I just was doing super fans, someone took something that I said personally and I was like, it's just like, I'm just giving you a script note. Like, you know, um, so I just think it's a learned trait. It's a lot of therapy. And I also think if you're really lucky, you're kind of born into it. I know people are born sensitive and people are born like me. And I think it would be really hard to exist in the world as someone who is sensitive that mm -hmm. when your boss yeah. like writes a short email or <laughs> The worst thing in the world is when someone texts you and is like, hey, we need to talk. And then I just spiral. Well, nobody into, should like, do that. That is one of the cruelest things that people do to each other. Right. But like at work, a work situation when people are like, hey, I want to talk to you about this work thing. And then you just spiral. Like, I don't know. It's like, it's not that big of a deal. And we're all going to die. And we're all dust. And we're stardust. Right. And like, I just don't believe in getting that upset about anything, you know? I think people's heads are so far up their own asses and they're all the only thing that most people care about is themselves, themselves. and they're not really thinking about how their words are coming off to other people. And some people exactly. are just like more naturally, like don't have a filter or a little bit come off as rude and like whatever. Um, I saw this TikTok that this one guy was talking about. Um, getting embarrassed, like having embarrassing moments and then thinking about those moments and they're replaying in your head for like a long time. And it was like, think about anybody else. And can you think of a, an embarrassing moment that somebody else had and how, like, what does that moment mean to you? How often do you think about it? And when you actually do that, you're like, I can barely think about anything that anybody else has done. And even if somebody had an embarrassing moment, like it's a fleeting moment in my head. So I think like all the things that we take so personally, we're so consumed with nobody else is thinking about and like nobody else cares. And even if it was, you messed up, you fucked up, you did something embarrassing. Like it means nothing to anybody, but you really, I don't know. I can't stop thinking about the woman who farted on the stand at the Johnny Depp trial. <laughs> I've thought about that every day since I've seen it. <laughs> that was phenomenal, though. Like, pretty insane. Uh, that should be something that, like, lives in, like, that's, like the that's imprints of history. That's embarrassing. That's not taking things personally. No, or no, maybe I'm just she kidding. did take things personally and then had some indigestion. I mean, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It was amazing. No one's thinking about you unless you fart on the stand at the Johnny you know. Trump. I have never actually All eyes on you, you know? thought of this, Kelty. When you just said this thing where referring to your mom, you're like, it's so annoying. It's not always about you. I've never thought of taking things personally in that way. But now when I think of that, it it's like so refreshing. Because when you start to catch yourself taking something personally that someone says or does, you can be like, you're not that important. Like it's no. just, it's just not about you. So no. it's, it's actually kind of a nice, like tough love thing to remind yourself that you're way imp more important to yourself than to anybody else. Well, everybody's one role on this earth is self-preservation and they're going to do it whatever way that they're going to do it. And they're not thinking about anybody else for the most part. So that's, it is refreshing because then you're like, Oh yeah, I can just go on and live my life however the f I want. Yeah. But like I live with like my mom is she's an engram too. And um so I live my life by like, you know, 
maybe my brother and I, I'm, I'm going to go over for dinner. And I was like, hey, like, I'll just go over tonight, like, and see him and I'll see you tomorrow. And like, yes, she lives an hour away. That makes the most sense. Like, we're happy. We're healthy. We're doing well. Like, but she would be like, oh, my God, they don't want me. They don't love me. I'm a terrible mother. I'm annoying. I smell bad. Like, she would, like, go into a tornado of all the things that are wrong with her. And I was like, literally, no one's thinking about you. We're just like, you know what would be easy tonight? You know what I feel like tonight is this easy thing. Like, yeah, my mom's the kind of mom, and I love her mom, my mom, but, like, she's the kind of mom. You know, do you have friends that, like, get offended if you don't wish them a happy birthday before they post about their birthday on social media? Yeah. If I do, I don't need more. Right. But it's like but the we people, all know those type of people. Right. But those kinds of people that are like, they just take everything. It's a scoreboard. So I'm like, sorry, I didn't think about you the first moment I woke up this morning. Like, I can't do that. That's no. that is so maddening that there are people out there who strategically repost their birthday things so that they can remind the people they haven't heard from yet that it's their birthday. If you're one of those people, you're a spiteful piece of shit. And then people aren't wishing you a happy birthday because they care about your birthday. They're doing it out of guilt and because they feel it, bad. Yeah. And also, some people don't remember fucking birthdays, okay? They're, that's just the reality of the situation. I don't even remember. I still can't remember what time my own baby was born, okay? <laughs> Clearly, I am not going to remember the person's birthday that I met a year ago that we've become acquaintances with and sometimes go out on the weekends together. I can't remember my son's birth time. Yeah. I forgot Chris's birthday this year. I thought it was the, the 29th when that 25th rolled around and I was like, Oh shit, I don't have a birthday present for you. That's I not was like, Oh man, that's just not giving yourself enough time. I full blown forget. Yeah. But that's a, birthdays. I think are the best example of that. How it's like, everybody is worried about their own shit. Like nobody cares about your birthday. Nobody cares. Unless it may be your partner. Lady Gang is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Let's face it, sometimes multitasking can be mm, overwhelming. Like when your favorite podcast is playing, like the Lady Gang, and the person next to you is talking and your car van is blasting, all while you're trying to find the perfect parking spot. But then again, sometimes multitasking is easy. Like quoting with Progressive Insurance, they do the hard work of comparing rates so you can find a great rate that works for you, even if it's not with them. Give their nifty comparison tool a try and you might just find getting the rate and coverage you deserve is easy. All you need to do is visit Progressive's website to get a quote with all the coverages you want, like comprehensive and collision coverage or personal injury protection. Then you'll see Progressive's direct rate and their tool will provide options from other companies all lined up and ready to compare. So it's simple to choose the rate and coverage you like. Press play on comparing auto rates, quote at progressive.com to join the over 27 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. Today's episode of Lady Gang is brought to you by the new Starbucks Baya Energy Drink. With caffeine naturally found in coffee fruit, it's energy that's good. It's crafted from caffeine naturally found in coffee, and it also has the antioxidant vitamin C. There's three delicious flavors, mango guava, raspberry lime, and pineapple passion fruit. They're a refreshing fruit-flavored boost of feel-good energy, and each 12-ounce 90-calorie can contains 160 milligrams of caffeine. I keep these when I'm in my office at home in my little mini fridge, and like two pieces when I'm just like starting to get the sleepies, I bust one open. It's like the perfect summer drink. It's so nice, you know, like before a workout. Awesome, awesome. So Starbucks Buy Energy Drink is available online at grocery stores, convenience stores, and gas stations nationwide. The cans are brightly colored like pink, yellow, kind of like the Lady Secrets book. And I guarantee you're going to love it. So try it out. Thank you, Starbucks Buy Energy Drink for knowing exactly what we needed when we weren't having our iced coffees. <laughs> Everything is better electrified, and Hyundai has the widest range of electrified vehicles on the market, including the first ever Tucson and Santa Fe plug-in hybrid EVs. Their turbocharged engines have quiet, rapid acceleration, and you can use electric when you want it or gas when you need it. It's your journey. Evolve it beyond the pump and in the 2022 Tucson or Santa Fe plug-in hybrid EVs. Or you can be like me and get the Kona, which is 100% electric, and I love my little Kona so much. Visit your nearest Hyundai dealer or learn more at Hyundai USA. Dot com or call 562-314-4603 for complete details. The Lady Gang. This is a little bit of a question that we got before, but I just want to hit on it because I do think it's important. She said, what do you do when your job 
Ugh, sorry. What do you do when your job gives you anxiety and you're so tired and I just want to cry all the time? <laughs> Lexapro. Yeah, I have a, I actually have a lot of thoughts about this. The first thing I want to say, I have a friend going through a very similar situation where she's in a bad work situation. She's breaking out in hives. She's losing her hair. She's not sleeping. And there's like no end in sight. And I think you have to recognize that this is not your, yourself. This is like a bad trench coat that you put on. You did this job and the way that you're acting and not able to sleep and stressed out and crying like this is this is a reaction to a very stressful situation, but it's not because you're weak or you're crazy or you're a bad person or you can't handle it. Like Becca was saying in another episode, like she's doing all these studies on like what we do to our endocrine systems, but I feel like I have looked so far into like your adrenal system. And when you get burnt out and if you get pounded with stress long enough in your life, your ability to even deal with the most mundane things, you become a toddler. Like I've been at that point in my life where it's like I was, you know, highly functioning, super, you know, doing all the things, keeping it together. But then someone would be like, I need you to stay an hour later and you just burst into tears and you're like, what's wrong with me? Why am I reacting in such an aggressive way for something that's not not that big of a deal? But like you get to a point where your body literally can't handle anything else. So that's when I really do feel like therapy, seeing a psychiatrist, talking it out, you know, taking some time off, like all of those things. Like if you're at the point where all you want to do is cry, it's because you're having a burnt out adrenal system and there's nothing that you're going to be able to do in your daily life. That's like a tiny change. That's going to fix that. Like you need to make a big change and like get your body back into calmness. I actually listened to a really good podcast up here. I'll post on the Instagram about how your body deals with anxiety and the six levels of like 5,000 years ago of like when, you know, that whole like animal chasing you thing, fight or flight, but there's actually six, six levels of it that your brain goes through and why, when you're in trauma, you can't remember it and why you break down like this. Like your body's trying to protect you. Sorry. This was a rant. You're okay. <laughs> Love you. Also, like sometimes when you're in that situation, you have those moments of, I'm going to throw it all away and move to Tahiti. That's the only thing that's going to make this better. Yeah. You'd be surprised at like giving yourself one day or a couple days to just rest, take care of yourself, feed yourself, do something that you enjoy, like kind of hitting the reset button. And then you can come into that nightmare job with a little bit more tolerance and a little bit more patience and just kind of a new perspective. Like, don't think that you have to put in your you know, I need 10 days off to go to Hawaii and a solo trip to find myself. Like it may just be a day or two, but just try it. Yeah. I agree. People want to know about wedding planning, Jack. Sorry. I know this is a tough subject at the moment. Um, just keep running into walls with the first thing that I need to do, which is finding a venue. Um, I didn't realize how fucking expensive I knew weddings were expensive, but how astronomically expensive that quote unquote affordable options are, are pretty crazy. And as somebody who is like paying for their own wedding themselves, it is pretty frustrating and like heartbreaking. And like, I I don't know what to do. I'm very lost in the process. So if anybody out there has any recommendations on a venue, let me know. Cause I can't do anything else without a venue. And I'm basically... I wish I had any suggestions. I know. I wish I had advice too. I, I got married in the backyard. <laughs> it's I might brutal. have to do that. But who's backyard? But also it's like I do feel Counties. like when you're making these inquiries with people, you should be inquiring about a birthday party. Because I do think that when you say wedding, they automatically like the price goes up. So I oh, think for sure. Be, I think you should be like, hey, I'm having a big birthday party. <laughs> um, we're going to find the spot for you. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, we'll see. Anybody that's gotten married at a beautiful beachy area, let me know. That isn't a bajillion dollars. Aren't? Okay. So do you want to have your ceremony on an actual beach? I mean, I wanted to, but it seems like it's not probable at this point. I'm pretty sure that like you can get married on a beach it's like a public park you don't have to pay to get married on a beach but you'd have to pay for 
like what that would require, like furniture and <clears throat> yeah, somewhere to but go. But like, I mean, I was looking to like that's why I wanted to do a villa or like I was looking at like boutique hotels or something so that we could like have the whole thing mm-hmm. at one spot. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, and I hate like it's like it, I'm so dr- I'm dreading everything about it, like the whole process. Like it's not exciting me. So I don't know. Could you do a beachfront villa like you were talking about where it's 10 rooms or whatever and just have, have everybody everyone else stay at the Holiday Inn down the holiday. street? And then get married ca- on a casual thing on the beach that you don't have to pay anybody to do and then you just party back at the house? Yeah, I was thinking about that. But there, there's now a, uh, a seaweed issue on the Cancun side of Mexico that it's called like Sargasset seaweed or something like that. And it's like these, tr- this truckloads and truckloads of seaweed come in and ruin the entire beaches for like six months. Mm. So, and then on top of the rainy season. So I'm like, and then Jared's schedule is crazy and he doesn't know when he's going to be on tour. So it's kind of like trying to put puzzle pieces of time together that like aren't fitting either. I'm just running into a bunch of different like logistical issues. But that's fine. I'll figure it out. I bet you there's a point. really great wedding planner that would do this for you for free. Maybe. Where are they? <laughs> I believe in you. I thank believe you. in you. And Thought- thank God you told me about the seaweed because I did see a picture of that. And I was like, is that picnic table covered in seaweed? And now I know. Yes, it was. No, it literally covers like entire beaches. You can't go under the water. It fucking stinks. Like it ruins. It's like it would ruin your entire time. Aye, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The last question is for me. Of course. Kelsey, what are the big differences you notice between Canada and America? Ketchup chips, the best chip ever existing. I don't even eat chips in America. Ketchup chips are fucking delicious. Mm. Number two, everyone in Canada where I'm from drives pickup trucks, and I find pickup trucks very attractive. <laughs> and when I see men driving a pickup truck, I feel like, <laughs> yeah. Third of all, um, the radio, I think there's a rule where you have to play like half canadian music and canadian media on the radio so like you're listening to the pop and it's like dua lipa nickelback um just well justin bieber's canadian um some other like pop song miley cyrus and then it'll be like sarah mclaughlin from 1996 (laughs) like celine dion i think in canada like songs that were popular 20 years ago still on the radio i think that they like pay Canadian artists like they you can get like um like a not a scholarship but what am I what am I trying to say a where they'll grant? give you a grant or something as a musician and as an artist in Canada is not do you know that Kelsey I have no idea have anyway. you heard of the Arkells no oh they're like a Canadian artist that they play like small venues in the U.S. but they'll play like amphitheaters in Canada they're like yeah. massive in Canada it's very it's very much the way Um, And then the other thing I would say is like everyone that is working as a checkout person wants to also like have a life story with you. Like I Mm. went to buy a bunch of stuff like supplies at the Shoppers Drug Mart and the woman was like, it's like, you know, when you go and you buy a bunch of embarrassing stuff, like I've got tampons, petroleum jelly and acid. Like I'm not a, in a good space. You know, I'm just like getting everything. What shitty. was the last thing that you said? Acid? Antacid. Antacid or oh, whatever. Antacid. Like some face mask, like a shampoo, like what's going on in her life? You know, I love shoppers. You know, me too. I love it. So, but like, you know, when you go and normally you're like, oh, hemorrhoid cream and the people are just like, they don't give a f- they're just beep, beep, beep. Mm-hmm. They're bagging up. They're like $35. Like when you're in New York at the Rite Aid, they're like, they don't even know what's in the bag. No. This woman is literally like, beep. Oh, preparation H. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> in pain. Like they really <laughs> want to like take in your life. Like, oh, is this shampoo good? I've never used this before. Oh. It says it's it's for for fullness. Oh, oh no. wow. Yeah. Well, your hair is very full. I'm like, just bag the shit, you know? Dude, I hate a chat. I hate a chat. The other thing I will say is McDonald's really had in Canada. They don't allow any plastic in Canada. So like everything that you get is paper. So like paper cup, paper top, paper straw, paper, paper straw on a paper. Anyway, they really have their plastic on lock. That's the big notice difference. Mm. Very nice. I'm sure this was thrilling. Anyway, I love you guys. I'm we're going to see each other. If you're listening to this, we are together right now in New York City, which I'm so excited about. I'm so excited. Yes. 
Bye. We were here for a long time. We were, <laughs> we were here, here for a good time. time. Thanks for listening. The Lady Gang is produced by Alex Ingber, Steve Delameter, and Jared Monaco. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review our podcast. And if you love it, share it with your friends on social media. Like, oh my god, I just listened to Lady Gang. This episode's so great. Swipe up to listen. And if you really want to, which we know you do, please follow us on social. At Kelty, at Becca, at Jack Vanek, and at The Lady Gang. Sign up for our newsletter at theladygang.com and join our secret Facebook group. It's super fun. See you next Tuesday.